Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today at the time of this recording is Saturday morning, July 25th. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. The market started out uh, pretty strong, right? This is Monday here, so we had three green days pushing higher. And then Thursday and Friday just kind of collapsed, took away all of the gains that it had gained the first three days of the week. And so what do we think's going on going forward? Well, I still, I've been talking about the last few weeks, I think the market in the short term is going to continue higher, either kind of chop sideways to higher. Now, obviously, anything can happen. This thing could continue to collapse, and I do think more downside eventually is inevitable. But I think in the short term, uh, we're, we're still going to be pushing higher. Now, does that mean we're going to flip directions and get long? No, we're still carrying a little bit of short delta. We did get rid of one bunker this week, as I'll show in the alerts. But we will, uh, we're not going to get too aggressive about adding shorts yet. Now, if we get another push, another extension higher, we will definitely be potentially adding some more shorts. But for now, we're just going to kind of manage as is, continue to put on new positions, take them off, carry a little bit of short delta. Right now, we're, we're right at about one to one or a little under one to one on our short delta versus our theta ratio. And so that is the plan going forward. Let's jump into the alerts. Let's go to trade alerts here, and then we will also do a recap of the day trades that we took this uh, this week. So starting with Monday, the 20th, our first trade was, yeah, the rut. So we, we closed out our iron duck and rut. We got that price run higher. Price ran up the beak of the duck. Didn't have much of a chance to get back into the duck head, and so we went ahead and closed that out, booked a profit on that one. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in GC in gold. Uh, we did this one a little bit further out than we typically do, 66 days to expiration, but still on that wheelhouse of kind of 30 to 60 days. And so we added this on, and then the very next alert was closing out the one that we had with 37 days to expiration. And uh, we were over 40% of max profit on that piece of the trade. So we went ahead and closed that out and then opened up in the next cycle. So if we take a look at GC, show you where we're at here. Now, implied volatility has really spiked. Yeah, so even though we're still well within range, we're down on the trade because of that implied volatility spike. If you, if you saw what was going on in silver and gold this week, let me just look at the futures here. I did have a pairs trade on. Uh, in, a, in one of my personal accounts is partially while I was watching, but I mean, gold just rallied hard and silver rallied even harder. I mean, we had a huge spike in, in silver and then now it's kind of leveling off, but uh, precious metals having a rally. So that's where we're at in gold. Next trade, opening trade in SPX. So we added another weekly double calendar in SPX, did this one with the front week of four days to expiration, the back week of seven. And uh, so now we had two of those on, which expired on Friday. So I'll get to the closing trades on those here in just a minute. Then we had a closing trade in IWM. So here's that bunker I mentioned that we closed out. This one had, uh, we were under 60 days to expiration. I think we were at 58 when we closed this out. So, the, you know, the price was starting to sag into that potential valley of death. So we didn't want to let that happen. So we took a small loser, got out of that one, and we've still got some other bunkers on, which I'll, I'll get to here in just a minute. SMH did a rolling adjusting trade, uh, got down to, we were 31 days to expiration. So we rolled out to 59. Uh, but the reason is we, you know, price ran higher. There's very little value left in the put puts. So we needed to roll those puts up. We could have stayed in the August cycle, but just decided to extend duration, get out to September, and so that's what we did there. So if we take a look at SMH, and that, that's kind of a that's kind of subjective call, right? When you're at 31 days, that's kind of a you could roll in the same cycle, you could roll out to the next one. It's kind of a subjective decision. So we went ahead and just rolled out to give us more time. Now we're already up over $600 since we did that roll. Um, and, and so if we do get a little bit of a continuation downside, that's going to give you a big benefit on this position here. Still working our way back to profits on SMH. Closing trade in SPY. So we had an iron duck in SPY. Again, price ran higher and into the um, beak. And so we went ahead and booked that profit early and, and closed that one out. 
Next trade, rut. We did another opening trade in rut and added a new iron duck in RUT. And we did this one with uh, 16 days to expiration. So if we take a look at that piece, pretty close to where we put it on. We're up a tiny bit, uh, just waiting for some more time to pass. Again, this expires on 8.8. So obviously, ideally, if it comes down a little bit into our duck head, book max profit. If it runs higher, no risk to the upside. And we could beak, uh, book a beak profit. Opening trade in SPY. So the next day we put on another duck as price was continuing to come down later in the week. Uh, did this one with 20 days to expiration. So just kind of spreading out our our symbols, spreading out our expirations, and just continuing to add these positions in here. Uh, so if, let's take a look at SPY. So we've got a couple of different positions on here in SPY. We've got this iron duck, where you can see it's it's up into the beak, and then the one that we just put on from that alert is this one here. And you can see prices come down since we put it on because we had that big down day on Friday. So price is just entering the duck head. And so obviously we've got some time left on this one, but that's where we want it to stay in that area. And then while we're here, we'll take a look. We also have an iron condor on in SPY. Price is hanging out right here in the upper end of the range. Uh, just waiting for a little bit more downside or some more time to pass before we do anything with that one. That one's out in August. So we've got uh, 27 days to expiration. So we got a lot of time there. Next trade, closing trade in SPX. So one of our weekly double calendar, we ended up holding both of these until Friday. And and just to give you a little perspective, because you know, what we've been typically doing is, is closing one out on Thursday, closing one out on Friday. Well, what happened is when we get this big down move like we saw, let me go to SPX. When, you, when, you, when we got this big down move on Thursday, uh, implied volatility popped and that helped our position and price got us back to center. And so we thought, you know what, let's just hold this, see if we can get a little bit more downside continuation into Friday, a little bit more implied volatility expansion. Now, if you look, implied volatility didn't really expand that much, even though price was down. And, the, and, and when I say it didn't expand, really the difference between the front and the back week, the differential didn't move that much, but price stayed, you know, down to to pretty steady, all right? It was in a very volatile day, and so it worked out well because we were able to book profits on both of our weekly double calendars. Now, um, go back to the chart one more time. So the when we put this on, we put we, we put one of these on last Friday, we put one on earlier, you know, Monday, and so we did get that volatility got crushed in the first part of the week, and so that was hurting our double calendar but then this popped it and, and, and got us back into the profit. So we ended up booking a, a nice a little profit on that one, like a little over $100 on that one. And then <clears throat> I'll go ahead and jump to this one. And then we closed this one out later, later that morning on Friday and, uh, and booked a profit of 165. Actually, let's just go to the closed trades here. Booked uh, 165 on that one and 105 on that one. So you say, well, that's, you know, that's, Cool, not not very much. But if you think about this, I mean, the amount of capital that we're using on these trades is about eight hundred dollars on each of these. So that's about a fifteen percent. That's about a twenty percent return on capital. That's about a twelve percent return on capital. So, and we're only holding these for, you know, depending on when we got in. One of them we got in. We were only in it for four days. One we were in for about six. So still a good return on capital. Uh, Any way you look at it, obviously we love those that that really get pumped up from the implied volatility and we can we can book bigger profits, but uh, but still very, very valid. Now, I, I mentioned this um, a couple of weeks ago and I'll and, and I'll mention it again. You know, we have we have made kind of an adjustment to the way that we're entering these weekly double calendars where we're doing it with the front week with like anywhere from six to eight days and the back week like three or four days later. We might need to start extending that duration between the front and the back weeks as implied volatility has continued to cr contract. Now, if we get a price move that continues lower and implied volatility spikes back up, we'll continue to do the short duration between the front and back week of these uh, weekly double calendars. But uh, but we may need to make an adjustment and, and I've been looking at it every time we put them on. And so we'll make that adjustment as necessary. Remember the course, when we, when we first started doing these, excuse me, 
when we first started doing these, we're doing about seven days in the front week and about 21 in the back week. And that was because the implied volatility levels were very low. So we were needing to, to do that to get the, the credit to make it necessary, not the credit, but to make, to get the premium next necessary to make these work. Uh, and, and so we're just, we're just altering that to make it work in the current environment even better. Uh, but we'll, we, we, we are keeping an eye on that and, uh, we'll make adjustments as needed to, uh, to adjust, to, uh, accommodate for the different implied volatility levels. And then the last trade here was this one in XLK. We had a long put vertical with the price moving lower. We were over 50% of max profit on this piece. So we went ahead and just rolled that out to the next cycle. We were at 21 days, rolled out to 56 and kind of uh, booked that credit and continued to extend duration, adjusted our strikes down as price moved lower. So if we take a look at XLK, Price moved, uh, yeah, so price is real close to where we rolled it, so no P&L since we did that roll, but just holding this for that downside, uh, short bias in our portfolio, some of that short delta. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of these other positions. We've got ES. Uh, we've got a couple different long put verticals. This one is uh, expires 822. It's a little bit out of range. Needs some downside action to get back into range on that one. And then this one is uh, inside range a little bit. We're up a little bit. Just looking for some more downside on that. Natty Gas. Uh, so Natty Gas has made a nice move higher this week and coming right back to center. So we're up over $771 since we did this roll. And you know we'll wait till we get to you know maybe 25 or so percent of of our of our credit. So once we're up a thousand bucks or so on this, we'll consider rolling out. We've got plenty of time here. We've got 32 days to expiration. So either when we get down closer to 21 days, or we're at you know 25 or so percent of max profit, we will roll that out to the next cycle and continue to to manage that and get back to profit. Working our way back nicely in Natty Gas as it's been just kind of, these are some pretty big swings, but still just kind of chopping around in a, in a decent range. So if we can get that from another cycle or two, uh, we'll be in good shape in Natty Gas. Bonds, uh, bonds, uh, you know, they pushed higher this week, but then started to retrace a little bit on Friday. Uh, we are out, a little bit outside of our range in our adjusted short strangle here. If we look at just the untested side, the puts, you can see we still got a little bit of premium left in those. So we're not too anxious to roll those puts up yet but if price continues higher we will in fact roll those puts up and continue to to manage that one we've got 27 days expiration so we'll definitely roll this out by friday of next week or maybe monday the following week we'll see where we're at uh, but if we can get it a little bit of downside action before then in bonds we'll be in good shape apple we've got this long put vertical price just inside the range here just holding that for that short delta same with John Deere. This one's a little bit outside the range. DIA, got a couple of short call verticals here. Both of them in August. This one's right outside the range. And this one is just inside the range. IWM, got a couple different posi uh, positions here. A couple of long put verticals. That one just outside the range. This one just outside the range as well. And then we've got a bunker left that's out in October. And you can see price is already starting to kind of sag a little bit. So we're, you know, we may, we're, we don't need to wait all the way down to 60 days to expiration before you take these off. We may actually take this off next week and, and add a new one in. So we'll, with a different duration. So we'll see where this is uh, early next week and, and potentially make a move on that. QQQ, we've got two sets of short call verticals. Uh, we're up about 380 on this one. If this price continues a little bit lower, we will go ahead and book that and roll that one out. And then with this one, same thing. If this continues uh, down in this range here, we'll go ahead and book that, roll it out to the next cycle. Uh, this one's actually already in September, so this one we'd actually just move our strikes closer, but the one in August we would roll out to September. And then we've got a bunker in the queues as well. Price is hanging out right here. So need some downside action to get in profits there. I mentioned RUD, I mentioned SMH, I mentioned SPY, XBI. Uh, nice, you know, it's down over almost two and a half percent on Friday. So coming back into range, we're up about 450 on that one since we've done the roll. So just kind of working our way back in XBI. And then I just mentioned XLK. 
So those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. Let's talk about the day trading. Uh, if you're not already part of the Facebook group, this is where we kind of update things on a daily basis. So just go to facebook.com slash groups slash navigation trading, or you should just go to Facebook and, and, uh, and, and search for day trading options for income or navigation trading. You'll find it. You can join here and follow along with what we're doing on a daily basis with our day trades. Don't forget, August 6th at 4 p.m. Central is the uh, actual class where we're going to be going over all the details of um, of the uh, of the day of the day trading strategy. So, looking forward to that. We'll be we'll be posting more about that, more about the details. We'll send you an email uh, to register, uh, but just kind of save the date. Note that 4 p.m. August 6th. So, how did we do this week? Let's take a look. We had a positive week. We're up over a little over thirteen hundred bucks on the week, and uh, so what happened Monday was made thirteen ninety. It was a good start to the week. Uh, booked a nice profit on Amazon. Uh, did a pairs trade here, uh, individual trade on the micro ES, and then couple couple uh, small loser in BA, and then a two seventy five loser in Tesla. But overall, thirteen ninety. So good day trading on Monday. Uh, Tuesday was even better. Uh, only one little loser in Boeing, and the rest were were nice winners. So booked some nice profits there. And then the next day, not so much. Uh, lost twenty seven hundred. Just over traded. Let this Nvidia loss get out of hand. Didn't stick to my rule of you know once if if I have three trades that lose, I'm done for the day. I did not follow that rule, and so that's that's what can happen, my friends. And and I think. One of, the, one of the main reasons to have that rule in place is because either one of two things is going on. Either mentally, you are not in sync. You're not, you're not into the markets. You're, not, you're, you're just not trading well uh, from a, a discipline or a mental standpoint. So that three losses can really just get you out and just say, I'm done for the day. Come back tomorrow. Fight another day. Uh, the other thing is, you know, maybe it's just a. sometimes the markets just aren't acting like you want them to for this type of a strategy, right? I mean, this doesn't work 100% of the time. And if it's just not working and, and you just keep going and trying to get back and get back and get back, this is kind of what can happen. So took a loss there, gave back basically everything and a little bit more that I made the day before. And then the next two days, Thursday and Friday, I was traveling. So no trades on Thursday at all. I didn't. I just didn't have any time to do anything but the core navigation uh, alerts and all that stuff. So I wasn't able to day trade. And then Friday, just uh, same thing. I was still traveling, but I did sneak in a few tiny trades and uh, booked a few winners. So Boeing, Zoom, and NVIDIA booked a $247 profit. So on the week... 1309 so another another green week so did have our did have our uh I, I at this point i was 11 days in a row with uh positive days and then it snapped on this day in a big way uh gave back 2700 so uh still good stuff though still continuing to just uh you know be self-aware about my mindset and my and my discipline and that kind of thing it's big it's a big game of discipline and uh, continuing to uh, do well and, and, and trade smaller too. You know, I mean, one, one thing on, on that losing day is, is I, did, I did start to, you know, I was starting to get a little confident, had this day, this day, back to back. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to up it a little bit. So I did trade a little bit bigger as well as just over traded. So it's just a game of, of, of mental, mental discipline. And I think what I'm going to start doing next week is, Per trade, I'm only going to be using two thousand dollars of buying power at the max. So anywhere up to two thousand dollars is what I can use, and I'm just gonna, I just, I want to because I want to, I want to start building a, a discipline for how I'm going to do this when we actually roll this out to members. I've been, you know, a lot of these, you know, I'm showing you my results, but a lot of this is is just kind of testing, you know, allocation and position size and and you know mixing in a couple of different strategies and you know the first the first class that we teach is just going to be on one strategy and so i really want to hone in on that and and uh, focus in on the allocation and the discipline of that specific strategy uh, as we get closer to rolling that out for for you all so that's what's going on in the day trading world hope everybody has a great weekend and we'll talk to you next week